Welcome to HackerTrading.com. I'm Hari Swaminathan. In this video, I'm going to cover the concept of standard deviation. So standard deviation is a statistical concept and it tries to plot on a graph the movement of, uh, of any, any kind of data and of course we are dealing with stock prices here. When we say that a stock has a one standard deviation range, what we mean is that uh, a one standard deviation represents about 68% of the stock prices from where it's currently trading. So if we look at the Apple example, Apple's currently trading at around $570. And we are in June right now. And standard deviations in general are calculated on a yearly basis. So if we, if we wanted to go out 365 days, we would want to look at something that's between April 2013 and Jan 2014. Of course, we don't have an option series that has uh, exactly 365 days, but it would be uh, somewhere between April uh, 2013 and Jan 2014. But let's just say it's April 2013, even though it, it's got only 297 days to expiry. Uh, let's look at the April series. And if we come to the right hand side here, we can see that the April series has an implied volatility of about 35.64%. And what Thinkorswim does is it calculates the one standard deviation range for Apple. So in this case, that one standard deviation range is going to be plus or minus $151. So Apple's current price is 570. So if you add 150 to that approximately, that will be about 720. And if you subtract 150, that will be about 420. So Apple's one standard deviation range over a period of about 300 days is going to be between 420 and 720. So that's what the one standard deviation range represents. Now, of course, how do they calculate this? They calculate this based upon the implied volatility, the volatility of the stock, and also based upon the prices, the price movement of Apple in the past, say, 12 months. So now you also have standard deviations for much lesser time frames. So if you see the July time frame, your one standard deviation is going to be plus or minus 32, uh, which has about 24 days left to expiry. Now the August series, which has 52 days to expiry, has about 57, uh, plus or minus 57. So you can see right away that standard deviation is not a linear calculation because if it was linear, you can see that the August series has more than double the number of days. Uh, of the July series. The July series has 24, the August has 52. But your standard deviation calculation is not going to be double. It's going to, uh, the standard deviation calculation depends on the square root of time. So for each uh, different series, you're going to see that the relationship is not linear. So that's, a, that's an important concept you have to understand. And all this is telling you is based upon uh, uh, past prices and the current volatility of the stock. So the obvious disclaimer is that this is based upon past prices and uh, the past does not forecast the future. So in the future, Apple's volatility could increase. It could go up to 40%. It could go up to 45%, in which case your standard deviation numbers are also going to increase. But what's important is that the statistical definition of, a, of one standard deviation tells you that for 68% of the time, Apple will trade in this range. So if we, if we come back to our 297 days, the April 2013 series, we can say that 68% of the time, Apple's going to trade between the range of 420 to 720. So obviously 32% of the time, it's, it could trade outside of that range. And that's important to understand. And uh, that's exactly why a standard deviation calculation cannot be a hard and fast rule. 
it's uh, it's only a signpost it's uh, it's there to give you an idea of uh, how apple prices have moved in the past and then for the current uh, level of volatility what you can expect 68% of the time now you also have a two standard deviation move which is uh, which will basically give you the range uh, for Apple prices for 95% of the time. Now the platform doesn't calculate the two standard deviation move but when we go into the Bollinger Bands I'm going to show you what a two st standard deviation move looks like. Now where the standard deviation comes uh, helpful is that if you are trading credit spreads so in a credit spreads you get the credit and you're also playing the out of the money uh, game. So you want to go as you know quite a bit out of the money and if you go outside the one standard deviation range then you can uh, you can be somewhat safe you at least the, the 68 percent probability that Apple will not hit your short option strike price so for example if we looked at the August series the August series has a standard deviation of plus or minus 57 so if Apple's current price is 570 if we uh, let's say we wanted to put a bull put spread so what we would do is see where the current uh, price is and you subtract 57 so if you subtract 57 from 570 that comes to about 510 or 515 so I think we need more strike prices you can always add strike prices by changing the strike prices there it's at the 510 strike price and Apple's current price is 570 so the difference is about $60 so now you're just outside of the one standard deviation range for Apple for this series which has 52 days left to expire so if you wanted to create a bull put spread at the 510 strike price what you would do is you would sell a vertical spread and and when you come here you have the 510 strike price and uh, you're selling the 510 and you're buying the 505 you're going to get a credit of 90 cents on this uh, on the spread and if you look at its risk profile uh, that's what the risk profile would look like and you know Apple's current price is here so uh, before expiry as long as Apple doesn't touch 510 you're going to make your maximum profit on this uh, trade which is about $900 now this is how you put probability on your side so here you're not uh, taking a judgment on whether Apple's going to go up or Apple's going to go down even if Apple goes down if it if, if let's say by August expiry if Apple is at 540 you're still going to make your full hundred percent profit so that's the advantage of going out of the money and putting probability on your side and the way you do it in general is of course you can put uh, you can put a short strike price even at 540 or 530 but if you want to at least put some probability on your side you would go just outside the one standard deviation range if you do that then you're putting probability on your side and uh, as long as Apple doesn't hit 510 your position is going to make your maximum profit so standard deviation is a concept that we are going to apply all through the course because um, when it comes to the stock market uh, a probabilistic mindset is very important uh, if you can uh, if you can think about uh, stocks and prices uh, in a probabilistic mindset that will be very helpful and so all through our course where we use uh, standard deviation uh, concepts as well as probability concepts and in fact even on the think or swim platform uh, you actually get columns of data that show you the probabilities. So we'll be covering more in all our courseware. Thanks for watching this video and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.